Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we are going to be taking a look at daisy chained 8 pins like this right here. Um, because a bunch of people called me out on my Vega 64 undervolting video about, hey, you shouldn't use daisy chained 8 pins, and so I figured I'd actually do some testing with that. Um, and I am fully aware of Jay's Two Cents video about how a GTX 1080 Ti loses performance when you use daisy chained 8 pins instead of, uh, you know, two separate cables. I think that has to do with NVIDIA's better power management because I've not been able to replicate that on any of the AMD cards I have here and I've never really noticed that being an issue. Um, so initially I thought, you know, this video is just going to be me talking about how you shouldn't use daisy chained 8 pins because they get really, really hot um, on some GPUs. But as you can kind of see, that's a 51 degrees centigrade. That's a Vega 64 on a 200% power limit at 3.8k RPM fan speed, so that it's not throttling as much as it normally does on the air cooler, and currently pulling... Wait, the amp... Did it turn off? Oh, I think it ran out of batteries, didn't it? Damn it. Oh no, it's back. Just being stupid. And pulling well over 30 amps. You know, so we're pulling almost 400 watts through that that cable here. Just that cable there. And temperature-wise, it's really not that bad. Especially considering the ambient temperature. Which is currently way up there. And sorry for bumping into the mic. Um, really weird. And I didn't label this one. Which one's plus? This one. Right. Uh, okay, let's see. There. Ambient is currently around the 30, um, courtesy of the GPU here. It's doing a great job as, of being a room heater. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it is chugging on, you know, it's pulling in 400 watts. Guess where those go? Um, into the room. So, you know, ambient temperature, almost as high as somebody's case in, a, in, uh, in an, you know, air-conditioned room. Obviously, if you don't have air con and it's summer, then the inside of your computer's case might be 40, 45 degrees, at which point the cables would be at like 65 degrees instead of 50. Um, depending on what kind of actual 8-pin power cables your power supply uses, um, that may or may not, that generally like 65 degrees on 18 gauge wire should generally not be an issue. Um, these are rated for 90 degrees on the insulation, so the insulation is rated for 90 degrees centigrade. Um, some of the cheaper wires I think go as low as 80 but generally, higher quality power supplies will use 90 degrees rated uh, insulation. So, basically, as long as the cables aren't going over 90, you're fine. As you can clearly see here, in a 30 degree ambient, the cable is only about 20 degrees above uh, ambient temperature. So, and, you know, we, we really are pulling 33 amp, well, 32-ish amps through it. So it's not like this is some low power test. It's really power hungry, which is why I'm using the Vega 64 here, not another card. I don't have another GPU as power. Well, there is the 590. Uh, you know, I do have a GTX 590. I also have an HD 7990, but those are dual GPU cards. And well, the 590, I don't trust the VRM to not explode on that. And the 7990, I could have actually used that, the 7990 now that I think about it, but Either way, you know, they're, those kinds of cards aren't really that popular. Um, I guess if you had a Vega on water cooling, you could push that current reading all the way up to 40 amps, um, which is doable. And at that point, you definitely want to use two separate 8 pins um, because, well, at that point, you'd be pulling almost... You'd be pulling over 500 watts. Um, so, well, no, you'd be pulling almost 500 watts through the connectors. And... Uh, at that point, the cables, like, would be really, really hot. It wouldn't be just, like... Right now, they're still maintaining 50. Um, so, yeah. it's it, it really depends on the environment on the card. Um, if you're on a single GPU and you're not doing anything crazy with it, you're probably not capable of overloading these cables. Um, because, technically, these are overloaded right now. Admittedly, if you have some cheaper power supplies... Uh, you might get cables that are like aluminum. These are copper. 
Um, obviously, copper cables have less resistance in them, so they'll produce less heat if you push power through them. If you have aluminum cables, they'll get hotter, um, which is an issue. But if you have a good high-end power supply with copper cabling, um, then you know you shouldn't see an issue with running a dual, dual like a daisy chain power connector um, for AMD cards at least, because AMD cards really don't care about this as far as performance goes. I tested with 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme. Uh, same, basically, actually, I even overclocked the card. Right now, the card is just set to 200% power limit and uh, uh, and 3.8k RPM fan speed. But earlier, I did some testing where I had the fan at something like 1700 uh, typed in, not actually hitting 1700. We all know how clock readings are on, Ve well, clock readings on Vega right now are kind of all over the place, so I don't really trust them. But I had the card set to 1700. 200% uh, power limit, maxed out fan speed, so, you know, 4.9k, um, and no difference, no difference in scores. Uh, dual 8 pins, two separate, you know, 8 pin cables, or this daisy chain, didn't make a difference to the card, um, probably because, as you know, in the last video we went over this, uh, AMD cards really don't have that advanced uh, power monitoring circuitry, so if you're, so I'm assuming what happens on NVIDIA cards when they lose performance. I can't test this. I don't have a GTX 980 Ti, 780 Ti, or uh, 1080 Ti, because those are actually cards that could pull enough power to, um, well, I assume those are cards that would pull enough power to really make this a problem. Um, but with, you know, without having one of those, I can't really test this uh, for NVIDIA cards. But what I assume happens on NVIDIA cards is the power limits aren't actually set as a wattage limit. They're set as a current limit. Which, if you think about it, makes sense because current does all the damage. Um, so you'd really like you want to limit the current, and you just assume that the power supply provides a voltage. So on power supplies that would provide slightly higher voltages, you might actually end up seeing uh, higher performance. And then power supplies that supply lower voltages would see less performance. And then when you use a daisy chain like this, you have more voltage drop going across, you know, say three, three 12 volt wires instead of six 12 volt wires. So that higher voltage drop means by the time the voltage gets to the card, it's lower. And if the card is current limited, then that would actually slightly eat into your overall power allowance because you're going to be, uh, you're still pull it, pull, pulling as much current, you're just doing it at lower voltage. So you're getting slightly less power overall, which would translate to slightly lower scores in benchmarks, which is what we saw, which is what Jay, uh, Jay's two cents saw in uh, his testing with the GTX 1080 Ti. Obviously, I've not been able to, air, you know, t check his testing. Um, don't have the cards for it. But with Vega and any other AMD card I've tested, it doesn't make a difference. Um, thermally, it's a bigger concern. But as you can clearly see, you need a card that pulls well in excess of 400 watts to really have a temperature issue unless your power supply is using really crap wires. Um, so, yeah. Um, personally, I I'm gonna keep using uh, daisy chained eight pins like this um, for quick testing and even for heavier testing. I'm not gonna use them for dual GPU cards just because I know they're not gonna be super happy with it. If I swap to an air cooler on this card, actually, if once I swap the cooling system on this card, obviously I'll use two separate eight pins. But I think this gives you a pretty good idea of that, you know, these daisy chains, they can take a lot of power. It's just a case of um, don't try to run an R9295X2 on these because, well, that card even comes with an explicit warning to not do that for a good reason. Because at that point, these wires might be hitting 60 instead of 50. And if you assumed, like, you know, computer case in summer with cable management, with wires going through the back of the case where there's no airflow... Yeah, that probably wouldn't be great. So, that's kind of the outlook. Ultimately, it is know your application, right? If you're trying to power some super power hungry cards with an overclock, don't use daisy chains. If you're just overclocking something that won't really go past 350 watts on the two 8 pins, knock yourself out. Run a, run a daisy chain, because unless your case has the world's worst airflow, it really shouldn't cause you any trouble. Uh, or you have an NVIDIA card, because they do lose performance, which, I mean, NVIDIA, what, 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 <laughs> what are you going to say about that? Um, I've seen too much weird stuff on the GTX 1070 to even complain at this point. Um, did I show you the ambient temperature? I did, right? Earlier in the video. Kind of lost track of what I've been saying. Anyway, um, in, in the 
interest of keeping this video short, I'd like to thank alza.co.uk for providing the Vega 64 I used for this testing. Um, they're a big computer hardware retailer for Europe as well as the UK. That's why they have the co.uk um, site as well. Um, they have free shipping to the UK and they have a lot of extreme overclocking goodies. Like right now you can go and get uh, liquid nitrogen pots from Kingpin on Alza. Um, they do bin CPUs. Uh, and actually, overall, there's just plans to uh, make Alza a sort of one-stop shop for all things overclocking. So, yeah, huge thanks to them for providing the card, and that's it for this video. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment or question down below in the comment section. Um, and uh, one more thing, what am I forgetting? Right, if you'd like to support me directly, then I have a PayPal, Patreon, as well as AHOC shirts. You can find them all down in the description below. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and if I find the stop button, see you next time.